Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the 16th episode of In the Spotlight. Um, I can keep going on and on about her achievements on court, like silver medal at the Rio 2016. She's world champion. But more than that, she is a true ambassador to Indian sport and the torchbearer of women Indian sport. So welcome, Cindy. Hi, thank you, Mudit. Sorry for uh, for joining really late. I don't know there was some connection problem, but uh, no, no, it's yeah. it, it's it's okay. Don't worry. I, I I think maybe it was my network or something. So that that's <laughs> fine. Don't worry. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. So well, under under these circumstances, uh, we're stuck at home, but currently we would, you know you would have been playing the group stages in Tokyo right now if everything was normal. Yeah. <laughs> so how how are you feeling about that? Well, um, you know, on 23rd, I was thinking, okay, you know, by this time we would have been playing, but then, yeah. you know, suddenly I get a message like uh, on Insta saying that, okay, one more year to go. And then I was like, you know, by now we would have been playing, but, you know, I, I understand the situation, like yeah. how it is, and because of this pandemic, you know, it's important to stay home and stay safe. So I just thought, okay, you know, it's just one more year and I have to keep working hard. But yeah. Uh, yeah, felt a bit sad, you know, we uh, actually worked really hard and it's been like, we were all uh, ready to go and there were just a couple of months and then suddenly, yeah. you know, this COVID has come. So yeah, but, but you know, it's, it's very important right now to just, you know, focus and just be calm and just keep going at the moment. For sure, for sure. And, you know, uh, let's sort of get, go through the whole journey and of course we will talk about the situation right now, but... How did you get into badminton and when did you know that badminton was your calling? Well, I started at the age of uh, eight and a half and uh, yeah, it was just for fun. So when I started yeah. off, uh, my dad was a, a volleyball player. Both my parents were volleyball players. So besides, yeah. there was a badminton court and I used to just play for fun. But yeah, um, obviously I never thought that I would become a, you know, um, all of the silver medalist or a world champion at that point of time. So it was just that, you know, I kept playing and I kept doing well. So, you know, I, I said, okay, why not? You know, I'll just give it a try. And that's how I started off badminton. And then I'm here today. So <laughs> I'm very thankful to the people out there who helped me and who supported me, uh, you know, throughout. Yeah. And um, especially my parents because uh, they've been really, really very supportive. So, yeah, at the age of 10, I then shifted to um, uh, Go Pitch in the Academy. And since then, I was uh, training there until now. So, yeah, that's so, how I started you know, off that. <laughs> for sure. I think everyone just starts with, with a love for the game and love to play. And, uh, of course, many people often have uh, a big struggles moving from the juniors to the seniors. Yeah. But uh, how was that for you and how did you get, get through it? So, yeah, when I started playing in the age groups, like I had in the national circuit, yes, we had like under 10, under 13, 16 and 19. So I was uh, pretty uh, pretty much doing well uh, when I was 13. I was doing well at the 16, uh, 16 age group. And when I was playing, when I was 16 years, I was doing well at nine, under 19. So it, it kept uh, going really well. But then, you know, international, is, international standards are not the same as, you know, national. So... Uh, when I started playing international circuit, it was I kept losing in the first round qualifying matches, and then I thought, you know, I need to work more harder. So that is when um, you know I kept working hard, and uh, at some point of time, I was really stuck where I used to come until the last point, and I used to keep losing. So I used to feel really sad, and I used to keep thinking, like, what's going wrong? Like, you know, what mistake am I doing? I'm also working hard, the same as you know others. So I think. Uh, that turning point, I would say, I've got in 2012, where yeah. I um, beat Lizuri. She was the correct Olympian, Olympic champion at that point of time. So I beat her in the quarterfinals, yeah, the quarterfinals. So I think that was a turning point for me. And I thought, you know, I can also do it. And since then, I worked extra hard. And uh, we had the sessions, obviously. And everything is, you know, combined where you... Yeah. Work at strategy, work hard, physical, mental. Yeah, so these all things added up. And yeah, I've been improving step by step, year by year. <laughs> yeah, well, in four years from 2012 and 2016, you were, you know, playing the Olympic final. And of yeah. course, we're going to talk about how you felt about that whole event. But can you tell us about how you prepare for such such big events and what goes up into into the run up of, of such an event? 
Well, um, yeah, I mean, I think we definitely we have uh, almost uh, every month we have, uh, you know, two tournaments, like 15 days we are out. So each yeah. tournament is very important for us. And yes, you know, when you lose a match, when you lose a tournament, it's very important to come back, rectify your mistakes and then, you know, go and play the other tournament and not think about the previous tournament. So obviously, um, you know, going into a big matches, I would say like World Championships or any match, any tournament is very, very important. And I just think that, okay, I've, I've worked hard and um, I have to give my best and do my best because we no, don't know like what's going to happen at that point of time. It's just that, you know, on that day, who plays give, uh, who plays well and give their best to the winner is what I feel. Yeah. So, yeah, I just went with that mindset and winning and losing is, you know, is always there. You just can't win all the time, you know, uh, but also you would have to strategize accordingly because each player has a different style of play and you, know, you need to have the capacity to, you know, change your mindset and, you know, be there on court focused. So this is what I prepare, you know, for my match, big matches, yeah, for every tournament, yeah. Right, right, right. And even when, you know, when you hear it from someone like you, that, that you know, there are wins and losses, then I'm sure everyone has to go through it. But uh, I'm sure probably losing that final was, was heartbreaking in its own way. But also, of course, you know, you, you were on the podium, you got the silver at, at the Rio Games. So... How, how did you feel then? I mean, what, what was running through your mind? Well, uh, firstly, when I um, was selected for the Olympics, I thought, okay, I have to give my best. And I never, frankly, I never expected, I never thought that I would get a medal. <laughs> but uh, it was just that, okay, it's my first time and I don't know how is it going to be there. And, you know, uh, because it's Olympics, it's, it's really very big event and it comes like yeah. once in four years. So, you know, I was all excited, but then I thought, okay, you know, let's see how it goes and I will play my best and yeah, rest, it's, it's up to, you know, what will happen. So, yeah, um, well, the atmosphere was really good. The village was really good. And um, yeah, we started off our matches and yeah, each match was very important. In fact, when I played my first match against uh, Lee Michelle, I was almost down like 17, 14 in the third set. And yeah. it was almost like I was losing the match. And if I lose, I was out. So yeah. then it, it turned and I won the match. And I think from there, I didn't look back. And, you know, match by match, day by day, I've been doing really well. And I finally came to the finals. Uh, so, um, yeah, when I came to the finals, it was just that, okay, I need to give my 200%. And I was all set. And, yeah, we, uh, it was a really great match, obviously. Um, yeah, again, winning and losing is, is part of life. Uh, I think that day, it was her day. Yeah, it was her day. And, yeah, when I lost the match, I felt a bit, I felt a bit sad. But then um, I thought that, okay, you know, I've got what I've not expected. Yeah. So, and then I kept myself happy and, you know, standing on the podium. Yeah, it, everything went off and I was really, really happy, you know, top of the world. And I was on cloud nine. <laughs> 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 for sure, for sure. But uh, yeah. do, you think anything, do you think anything changed for you after the Olympics, this this whole big performance? Yes, yes. I think my life has completely changed after the yeah. uh, Olympics. Yeah, definitely, yes. And it gave me a lot of confidence. It gave me a lot of boost. So in one way, I must say, yes, um, I think my life has changed. And even now, when I look back, I I, I just can't just forget that. I mean, that moment... You know, it just kept going and going for months and months. It didn't get, like, uh, it didn't sunk in. So yeah. then I kept winning tournaments. And I thought, okay, you know, these kind of matches give you a lot of confidence and a lot of boost. And, yeah, yeah in that way, I've also improved my, um, you know, my game. For sure. I mean, if, if it wasn't sinking in for you, I mean, it wasn't sinking in for all of us as well. I remember uh, in 2016, I, I met you at... Um, I think I I met you in 2016 right after you had won this medal at at the OGQ uh, event OGQ. the first time I met you there. So yes. can you talk us through the sorry? Yeah, yeah, I met you that time. Yes. Can you yeah. hear me? So I yeah. I just I mean you know there's. There's a lot of uh, private and um, public sponsorship now going on. So, you know, OGQ has been supporting you since you were 14 years old. How, how has that experience been? Well, I'm very uh, thankful to them because they've been really, really, very supportive since the age of 14. And they believed in me that I can do something and get that money for the country. And I think 
I uh, proved that and I've been best sport since 14 uh, till now and still it's been uh, really good and I must say Brigade and the members of OGQ have been really very kind and really very you know every time they keep visiting us and see you know what's what's going on do we want something and you know if we want to get something some equipment they're like they're always ready and you know anything we need and they 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 were always there it's not that you know okay we'll see you for the next time that was never there you know anything i say it was like okay we'll get it done so i think yeah. the the yeah i mean the whole group the whole the members of OGQ also have been have been so brilliant and so kind enough that you know whatever we need they were always there to help us and i'm very thankful to them so they're surely a big part of of, of your success yes. but yes. um you know there are a lot of on court memories i'm sure like the olympics or other 2019 world championships if you had to choose one or two memories to share with all of us what would those special memories be uh there there are a couple of memories like i would say yes of course uh, hello so yes, on the court, on the court, yes. On the court, on the court. On the court. Yeah. On court okay. So I would say um, yes. Um, yeah. uh, I would say World Championships 2019. That was one of yeah the present memories uh, where I got the gold for the country and uh, I always had this in mind and I would say my first World Championships where I got the bronze. So yeah, yeah I had like two bronze, two silver, and and a gold. So it was much weighted win for me. And um, <laughs> yeah, and the Olympics, obviously, that was yeah another uh, memory. And yeah, I think these two are are in my uh, memories list where I would say the top in the top list. Well, I mean, you you were also asking me whether it's on court or off court. So if you want to share <laughs> something with us off court, what would be that one super special memory in in your badminton career? Well, um, off court, I would say, uh, I mean, after coming back from Olympics, um, people here were like, you know, you didn't, you don't know how was it uh, when you were playing matches there. You don't know how. And I'm like, okay. And uh, I would say, I must say that the reception when I came back from Rio was amazing. I yeah. like never expected, you know, so much because, you know, when I got down from the airport until our academy, there were people standing holding my banners and stuff. And it was like really a very good moment for me, which I can never forget yeah. in my life. And um, yeah, one of the like most, uh, where I really, you know, it was very uh, thoughtful and I felt really bad because uh, when I came back from Olympics, uh, so there was this guy who sent me a post. Um, he was working, like he was a worker. I mean, he was working somewhere and he gave me his one month salary and that was really touching, like really touching. Yeah. And I was like, and he was really poor. Obviously it was like 500 or 600, whatever it is, you know, but yeah, giving, yeah, hard, you know, yeah. sending him like, sending him his one month salary has been, I would say it is one of, I felt really, really sad. But then uh, in fact, I wrote a letter and sent him a bit of money. And I think that really touched, I'm very touched with that. That was, I would say, one of the, I think it's it's moments like this that you know really make you feel that all this hard work, everything you put in, is is so worth it. Yeah, and I'm sure. Yes. No, I'm I'm sure you also have a great support team around you, as in your coach, your physios, of course, your parents as well. So, what do you think are some of the most important pieces of advice that they've given you? Yes, uh, as you said. Um coach, uh, trainer, physio and also parents and also the support staff like, you know, the sponsors like OGQ and many more are really, really very important in, in an athlete's life because, you know, uh, it's very important when people give you advice. It's, it's good to take, but if you really get offended, if you don't want to take, you can just leave it. But, you know, advice is always for free. You can just take yeah. it and you never know when it is going to work. So I, I just think to myself that, you know, people keep telling me you should have played like that, you should have played like this. I always think that, you know, okay, you know, I, I might, you know, I should try once. You know, there's nothing wrong in trying. And they always told me that, you know, of course, hard work, hard work is a key to success. And um, 
uh, they were always there for, uh, for supporting me when I was low, when I was losing my matches. They, they made me believe that, you know, uh, there's always a next time. And I think uh, those uh, few things really helped me. And yeah, because of all of them, I'm here. And especially talking about the fans and, uh, you know, the people out there, I would say that, I, I mean, the support that they've been giving me has been, has been fantastic. Because, you know, every time I win, I lose, there are, pe there are people to support me, to motivate me. And I think that's really very kind of them. For sure. I think the support of everyone is extremely important to all of us. <laughs> And, you know, for, for every all the viewers, we're going to be doing a giveaway um, sometime in this session. So, guys, stay tuned. Um, yeah. Okay, so now let's sort of get to the little fun part of it, to the rapid fire. So, what is your go-to workout song? There's no one song, I would say, but um, I like fast beat music. So, okay. it can be anything. Yeah, it can be anything. English or Hindi? English. Okay, okay. Um, if you if you could take one shot or stroke from any player, any badminton player in the world, male or female, which stroke would you take and from who? <laughs> um, I would say Topic. He, yeah, he's one of okay. the men in badminton. Yeah. And uh, yeah, his backhand. Yeah, his, his backhand is fantastic. And I would say yeah, Lindan, of course, he's also another legend. So the way he plays. Okay, awesome. Unfortunately, he's retired now, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he knew. <laughs> um, you know, uh, uh, this is a really random question. A lot of people have asked me about your diet and things like that, and I'm sure obviously you do not eat sweets. But a fellow <laughs> Olympian of yours has said that this question is going to be really important. So, well, oh, is is Lynn your favorite? Who, who is that? Who, who asked? <laughs> I, I'll share the name first. You need to hear the question. Is lint your favorite chocolate? I think you'll guess who the Olympian is. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, it is. Like, I can't guess who it is. Please tell me. Okay, but, okay. I, I'll tell you, <laughs> but you can answer first. <laughs> yeah, yes. Lint is my uh, favorite chocolate, yes. Okay. Okay, well, guys, if anyone is wondering, this is from Devinder Valmiki from the oh, Indian okay. Hockey Team. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yeah, besides... I, I, I'm a foodie. Yes. No, sorry. I, I like um, I like junk food, but yeah, I'm not supposed to eat always. But otherwise, <laughs> uh, yeah, I like pizzas, burgers, chocolates, ice creams, like a normal girl. <laughs> of course, we we all do, but uh, we gotta control a little bit. But um, from those, what is your favorite cheat meal? From those, I would say in food, I would say Italian. And uh, when it comes to uh, sweets, I would say, I would say everything. I'm sorry, but you can't give me an <laughs> option. <laughs> I can't choose one because, yeah, I, I like everything. Yeah, it's, it's a very tough question to choose one. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, what, what is the first thing that you did in your house when you came back from Rio 2016? I had biryani, Yeah. <laughs> I have Hyderabadi biryani. <laughs> that was the first oh, thing. Oh, I'd die to have that right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, who, who's who's? Hello. Uh, you, you, can, can, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, who's been your role model or inspiration growing up? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I can. Um, I would say, um, role model, my dad, because, you know, he himself was a volleyball player and I think the way he's, he's played for the country, uh, I think the way he's, he's done for the country has been really great and, um, you know, my inspiration is him and I would say, um, I mean, role model is him and inspiration, I would say, I, there are a couple of players when it comes to Serena Williams and when it comes to Federer and Nadal. There are a few things, like every player, every athlete has, you know, some other, other unique thing. So I would choose one from uh, each of them because, I mean, they're doing, you know, for their country, the playing for their country has been, like, tremendous. And the, the way they've, they've given their country, like, they won for the yeah. country, I mean, like, yeah, hats off to them. Yeah. 
Okay, well, now that you took their names, you're making this a little bit easier. Uh, what would you do if you woke up as Serena Williams? <sighs> I would rule the world. Okay. You, you probably already do that, but it's okay. <laughs> um, always, always. <laughs> Uh, what would you do if you woke up as Roger Federer? Oh, woke up as Roger Federer. That's a tough question. Uh, wake up. But I don't have uh, much of goals because, yes, as a badminton player, everybody, as a player, as an athlete, everybody would have goals. But as a person, I would just think that, you know, uh, everybody should be happy and yeah. you know everything should be fine and right now if i would have woken up like that i would just think that okay this covid should just just go away <laughs> well i hope that tomorrow you wake up as roger federer and covid goes away <laughs> yeah um okay so you know i'm sure you you've met a lot of influential a lot of you know amazing people in all your sports um journeys yeah. If you had the chance to meet anyone, male or female, who you haven't yet met, who would you meet? Oh, uh, yeah, it would be uh, Fedra. Fedra? Yeah. yeah. Serena Williams, yes. I've seen her at, at the Rio, but I couldn't meet her because, you know, she just finished her match and came back. So, yeah, for the Fedra and um, Serena. Um, I'm not sure whether Fedra is watching this, but if you are, <laughs> please meet Sindhu soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So let's let's sort of go back to the more uh, serious side of it. But before that, uh, we can do the giveaway. I think right now. So uh, for the giveaway, um, you know, you you can ask the audience any uh, question, and whoever answers it first in the comments will will get the the giveaway. Okay. So um, okay, which. Uh, when did I get my first uh, World Championship medal? Okay, guys, you heard that. When did Sindhu get her first World Championship medal? I'm sure these answers are going to be zooming in soon. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was in the comments. Maybe I would have written the right answer. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm waiting for some comments, guys. Come on, you yes. guys. Um, you guys are going to get 20. I'm not sure. Uh, 2019? First no. medal. First. Yeah, exactly. First medal. Well, I can see someone. Some, Samia Cobb. I don't know. Yeah, Samia. Yeah, she said 2013. 2013. I cannot see that comment actually for some reason. Can you read out the username, please? So, uh, one second. Let me come back again. I don't know why I can't see this comment. The first 2013 one that I see is from the food album. I think it's can you, can you Can you see her use on I just like scroll up, but let me check again. I cannot see it for some reason. I'm up all the way till when I ask the question, but. Okay, anyway, if Samia is on this, can you please just DM me or whoever the lucky winner was? There are like so honest, many Samias who joined again. Like, lots of Samias are messages saying, okay, it's me, it's me. <laughs> oh, good lord. Okay, we're going we're gonna to figure this out. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll, we'll figure this out. So, so sort of um, back, to, uh, back to the uh, regular questions. Um, the last speaker on, on my series was uh, Geeta Fogart, the, the star wrestler. And she wanted to ask you, uh, how do you have so much energy on the court? Okay. Is, so it, is it from Gatorade? Or? <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise... Um... You know, when we go on the court, it's always that, you know, we have to give our, our best. And it can be anything, obviously. You know, when Gita just goes on the court, she's going to fight hard to get that match, yeah. to get that win. It's the same way for me. You know, I just go on the court and I want to get that win. And um, it can be rivalry. It can be that fight. It can be, it can be that aggression, that grit. But, you know, we always want to get that match. And we will fight hard for that. 
and people yeah. ask me a lot of times where you know um, on court is so aggressive you know off court they used to think off court also i'm very serious but yeah i am not that kind of a person off court We're yes i agree <laughs> i agree that i'm a very um, i'm very aggressive but um, on court i'm quite opposite i'm very jogging yes Right. So I'm I'm sure that um, you know you get this energy and enthusiasm also because you're so fit. So what what you know I've seen some videos of you doing Olympic lifts. Uh, how long have you been doing that, and how has it helped you? Yeah. So yes, it's a very good question. Where I would say everybody and recruit everyone that we all need to be physically fit, and. Yeah. Um, for that yes you need to train hard you need to improve your endurance i'm sure with it for you also you know i'm i'm sure that you know endurance like physical fitness is very important yeah. uh, for you guys so you would understand what i'm trying to say yeah um yeah i've been doing that um uh, olympic lift since like uh, 2018 i would say yeah okay. so yeah i i train in uh, sushita academy and uh, i my training is from there So I go and train there, and I've been training there since like 2017 until now, and still continuing. Obviously, because of this uh, COVID, um, it's not possible. But um, otherwise, uh, um, yeah, I think it's it's really very important for every athlete to uh, know their strength level and train accordingly, not just uh, you know misuse where you just lift heavy weights and you think that you're you know you're very strong, but it doesn't yeah. matter like. Uh, you know how many reps you do how much weight you do but it's very important that you do in a correct way and you do it yeah. correctly yeah you you just maintain that and i think it, it's definitely going to be fine and slowly gradually you can improve in whatever you do so yeah i mean i'm sure i i completely agree with you that of course i think the form is very important yes. and you know that's that's even i think on the court i mean i'm sure technique and these things are very important so you know i'm sure Gopi sir has played a big, big role in in your career. So, you know, what what would you just say about him? Like, share a memory or, or anything? Yeah. Else? Um. So yes, of course, Gopi sir has been my coach, and um, I'm very thankful to him because you know, year by year, step by step, I've been improving. And yes, uh, strategy uh, is very important because uh, you need to know as a coach and as a player, you need to have the connection where you need to understand the coach, and you know the coach should understand the player. Because I'm sure Gopi sir would have like you know a lot of players, and everyone's mindset is very different. So you know, with everyone, he need to act accordingly. He need to you know um, tell each athlete in a different way. Uh, yeah. So in that way, I think Gopi sir um, off court is very friendly, very nice. But you know, when it comes to on court, his you know like he gives his hundred percent. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I would say as a coach, he's um, he's really good, and I'm very very thankful to him because uh, he taught me a lot of things. Um, even though I was down, he was like uh, he would always support me. It's it, he would just like it's fine, it's okay. You're not gonna lose anything. <laughs> you know, there's always yeah. next time. So yeah, there were a couple of matches where um, I didn't do well, and you know he used to say, "Okay, what's going on?" And he used to scold, not scold, but he he used yeah, to try yeah, yeah. Uh, try and make me understand in a way. So yeah, I think the connection between the coach and the player is is very important, and I think uh, Gopi sir and me have a very good connection as a player and a coach because uh, it's not so easy because when you play on the court, you know. the coach sitting behind you needs to understand how the player is playing at the same time you need to strategize and change it accordingly well if plan a doesn't work you need to go with the plan b and yeah i mean the way he's um, coaching everyone is i'm sure you know he's giving his 100% and yeah i'm very thankful to him for sure and i, I think you were talking about mentality also over there So, how do you think mental training or mental fitness has played an important aspect in your career? Uh, yes, mental um, aspect has really played a very important role <clears throat> because you know I'm sure like a lot of athletes face this. I mean, even like even me, uh, before when I used to lose match, I used to feel sad and then come back, and then you know sometimes I used to think about that you know in the next matches. but uh you know recently like it's been one year that i've been i've been started doing meditation i think that really helped me and i think my mental fitness my mental level has been really good where i 
it's not that um, if we do meditation, you know, we, we will get success. It's not that way. But you understand what's going on in yourself and you accordingly, you know, think about it. Like, for example, you know, sometimes when you play a match, like, for, I think it happens to you when you keep playing and when you're really tense, you just go blank, right? So yeah. that is when, you know, you have that thinking, okay, you know, it's okay. You know, we just have to forget about the last point and focus what's going to be the next. So in that way, it really helped me. I got that clarity where, you know, even though I was tra even though I'm trailing or I'm, you know, about to win a match, when I start losing points and when I get tensed, when I'm really, uh, you know, uh, don't know what's going to happen next. And that is when I think, okay, you know, I just have to be calm and just keep going. It can change yeah. any moment. So if you have no, that clarity, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, things will change. No, for sure, for sure. And I think, um, you know, a lot of comments are actually coming in asking how you stay fit. And to many people, I feel, you know, fitness is all about the gym. It's all about working out. But I think a large aspect is also your diet. Yes. So what, what are your do's and don'ts? What diet do you follow? Um, if you could share it with us. Yeah. So, well, my uh, diet, I would say that it's not that... Uh, I'm sure that for every individual, it's a different diet because for a few people, you know, you, you they don't eat rice. For a few people, they don't eat roti. So for me, I'm, I'm used to eating rice. So I eat rice and um, yeah, of course, I eat non-witch. So um, it's not that I uh, don't eat or I diet a lot, not eating food. But yes, food is very important where you, you need to take the right, in the right way where proteins and carbs are very important. So it's not that I eat uh, junk food. I think it's it's very important to, you know, not eat so much of oily food. Once in a while, that's fine. But I would not recommend, you know, daily or every day that you eat a lot of oil and, you know, a lot of sweet. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, since it's me, once in a while, it's okay. <laughs> I would not lie to that. But um, yeah, my diet is is. It's just like normal. I eat rice. I eat uh, non-witch. In the mornings, I eat uh, eggs, milk, and some kind of breakfast, like South Indian breakfast. And then in the afternoon, rice in some veggies and uh, some non-witch. And again, yeah, in the night, I would eat some veggies, sometimes just vegetarian or sometimes non-veg. It's not compulsory that I eat uh, every day non-witch, but yeah, some uh, once in a while or sometimes I just like avoid eating non-witch for like three, four days. And then, yeah, it depends on my mood. <laughs> sure. I'm well, sure, like, yeah. No, sorry, go on, go on. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, um, there are, I, I'm sure that there would be a lot of vegetarians out there. <laughs> so there are also very good uh, proteins in, you know, in, ve in, in the vegetarian uh, meals as well. So I would not just say that everybody should eat non veg I think that is not, you know, compulsory, yeah. No, for sure. I mean, you know, I, I do end up eating non veg but not so much. And, you know, vegetarian food does also give you that. So for anyone yes. watching, guys, uh, you know, it's 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 not about what type of food you eat, but it's about what you eat in, the, in that food. But two shorter questions. So if you were had like a cheat meal, would you rather eat some junk food like a burger or something? Or would you go more for the desserts? I would go more for a burger and stuff, yeah. <laughs> and and do you do you drink any uh, coffee or any like you know, yeah I I, uh, I have coffee and tea as well so yeah, if yeah. It's in the morning I have coffee like it depends on my mood so yeah anything is fine I have coffee and tea yeah not awesome. every day obviously awesome. but yeah whenever yeah. needed that's it yeah awesome. Okay, so now it's a little bit of a tricky question and I'm going to look at my notes for this because I do not think I can pr pronounce some of the names well. But okay. if you were playing the Olympic final in Tokyo and you had the chance to play uh, Carolina Marin, Tai Zhu Ying or Okuhara, who would you play and why? Actually, I play with every, everyone <laughs> at Rio. <laughs> So, uh, I would say everybody was in their form and they gave their 100%. And yeah, I won that secondary. But uh, when you talk about the finals, I think it's been a really good finals playing with uh, Carolina because uh, she's also a very aggressive player. And 
Yeah, if you ask me to choose one, I would say I played with everybody. So uh, everybody went in my uh, like three quarter, quarter final, semi final. So I can't just choose one because I played with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so whatever the draw comes as, you're ready for next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think draw shouldn't be a matter because you know yeah, yeah. you just can't change anything about it. But you have to face one or the other. You know, at some point of time, like when you Eventually. when you don't play against with a tough player in the finals, you will anyways play against them, right? So I would say that you know, draw doesn't really matter. It's just that we have to be ready for anyone. So talking about uh, you know Tokyo, uh, you've already played in the venue that that's going to be the the event host. Yeah. Uh, how how do you feel about that? And I think a lot of younger players, especially, have this difficulty of you know getting used to a new venue, getting used to new arena. So what advice would you give to them? Um. Yeah. I mean, I played there. We have a Japan Open. Um, you know, we had that tournament, and uh, yeah, Tokyo is going to be there. So. It's really good. It it is a really big stadium, and I'm sure that the you know the whole atmosphere is gonna be good. It's gonna change when it comes to Olympics because you know, uh, <laughs> seeing it like in the normal tournament and seeing it the Olympics is is very different. And um, yeah, talking about uh, youngsters, um, I'm I'm sure that a lot of people might feel that, but um, you know, generally when we go for tournaments, it's just that we just go like two three ta- two three days before, and we get used to the court. I'm sure because you know uh, in badminton there's a lot of drift and the shuttle is is different. So to get used to it, you uh, we go uh, two days earlier. But I would just say that uh, you know when you're playing on the court and sometimes uh, like I've also had few days where I've complained that okay the shuttle is fast, the shuttle there's a lot of drift and stuff. But you know at some point of time I actually thought that is it is also then. Is there for her? The shuttle is even the shuttle yeah, is not yeah. for her, you know. So I, then I thought, you know, it it makes sense because it's it's for both of them, and I I shouldn't complain about it, you know. Some people say that the lighting is not good. It might not be good, but uh, I think uh, we shouldn't comment because it is also same uh, for your opponent. And yeah, we have to just play how it is. We have to get used to it. There's no other choice. I'm, you know, this is actually very similar to what what my coach tells me, uh, Kamlesh sir. I'm sure he's he's watching, and he he was uh, he was at the Gopi Chand Academy a couple of years ago when he was in Hyderabad. But um, you know, what what is your what is your success mantra, and what would you tell uh, younger kids, you know, to inspire them? Uh, success mantra, yes. Uh, first thing is hard work, as everyone know, hard work is the key to success, and uh, also there are a lot of things. I'm I'm sure that you know a few people might say I'm really working hard and I'm not getting success. What to do? <laughs> you know when will I win? <laughs> but yeah, to the people out there, I would just say that you know you need to keep uh, going and you need to keep believing in yourself. And I'm sure you know you can do it. And yeah, I mean it's not just like few months of hard work, but it's just it takes years and years. Few people might get exactly. success in early years. Few people might take time. But it's always that you have to have that belief that you can do and you can achieve, and you need to keep going. And yeah, you need to enjoy the sport. Like very importantly, you need to enjoy the sport. Not that someone asks you to do something and you're just doing for the sake. Later, you shouldn't think that you know why did I play? You shouldn't regret about that because you need to have some goals. But very important thing, first thing is you need to enjoy the sport no matter what. And yeah, winning and losing is secondary. If you enjoy the sport, if you give your hundred percent, I'm sure you will get it there. So I think yeah. these are the few things I I want to tell uh, you know few people out there. And also for the parents, I would say that um, they need to support their uh, children in whichever sport they want to. You know, I'm sure sports in our country has been doing really well. And you know, from cricket, badminton, wrestling, I think everything. Uh, in every sport, there are really, really good players, and I'm sure a lot of youngsters would want, you know, to take up sports and take it, take it as a profession. You know, to them, yeah. I would say, to to the parents, I would say, you need to support their kids, your kids, in whichever sport they want to, and I'm sure they will uh, definitely um, work hard and, and come out. No, for sure. In fact, I was just gonna get to this that you're truly a sports ambassador in India. And you know, I'm sure obviously young kids, but also parents are, you know, obviously going to take your advice very seriously. And we're also seeing this phase change in India. You know, it's being taken very seriously as a profession across many sports. 
so where where do you think you see indian sport in 10 to 15 years uh yeah right now <clears throat> you know uh, they are starting sports from the grassroots level which is really good and yeah the uh, sponsors uh, when you take ogq or you know there are a lot more when i when i talk about them i'm sure you know they would definitely recognize youngsters who have talent in them it's not that we don't have talent but yes we yeah. have a lot of talent and then like lots of kids who who have talent in them who have talent in themselves and it's just that you know they have to come out they have to play they have to take it seriously and yes parents should support them and at the same time we have these um, kero india where you know they choose um, uh, talented players and they you know have the selection and then they take to another level which is really really good i'm sure like these kinds of uh, sponsors and the support if if uh, the young talent players have and i'm sure that the government have been really very very supportive coming up with these uh, kero india and a lot more and sure. uh, yeah with the top scheme where they support the youngsters Thanks. that you know that they can do with they believe in them that uh, in them that they can do really well for the country and talking about you know for the next 10 years i would say i'm sure that you know there will be a lot of uh, players who will get a lot of medals for the country i can assure you that, that. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's that's the ultimate aim. I think we need many more Sindhus coming up, and uh, you know, as you mentioned, I think Kiran Rijiju sir and his team, yes. uh, everyone has been doing a great job at, in Kelo India, Fit India, all the other uh, great movements that that they have. But you know, India is also considered the the country of leagues. So, what would you have to say about you know PBL, IPL, you know all the other leagues that there are there in various uh, sports, and how do you think that is helping Indian sport? Uh, that will definitely help a lot of youngsters, and especially uh, you know they get to see uh, top players, and it's not just about yeah. playing and you know practicing. It's just that it's also more about when you watch them play, you will uh, learn a lot more. so i think these kind of uh, leagues really uh, motivate and um, and give you that boost that you know okay you know that is how they are playing you know, we need to play like that play like you know a, a top level when it comes to taizu when it comes to victor you know any of them so it's 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 a very good um, uh, recognition as well because a lot of uh, youngsters who are playing in pbl you know they might not know what it is but you know when they come into the team and they when they interact with the top players they understand the value and that is how you know they also play accordingly and they get a chance to play with them so it's it's really uh, you know i would say it's a motivation for them and it's a very good encouragement for for uh, the youngsters and a lot of people can take inspiration from a lot of top players who are playing in our leagues and we also play in different states and cities so it's really good that people uh, get to see us live you know to get to see us live because it's always in in um, on the tv where they get to see us but you know playing live and also especially for me i would say that it's there are very special moments when we play in india because the crowd and the support has been you know tremendous and uh, it's always so good to play in india like playing these leagues in you know I know we we get together with other uh, other country players and play as a team, which is all together different atmosphere. But it is always good and really nice where we enjoy and also we get to know each other really well. For sure, and in fact, through through one of these leagues and camps and stuff, you know, I got close to some of the other TT players, and there was one question that came up. from okay. all the girls from the tt circuit <laughs> was you know they they think you have extremely beautiful hair so what is the Me? secret behind oh it oh my god <laughs> <laughs> um um uh, yeah i like long hair so thank you for the people out there who said that i have extremely beautiful hair but uh, yeah i i really like my hair i really like to grow long but you know because of this bad hygiene i know you know you need to sacrifice few things where you can't just grow your hair long but um, yeah it's just the right nutrition that you take that's it nothing more than that <laughs> <laughs> for sure <laughs> okay guys so we we're, we're sort of coming coming towards the the end of this um, and also you know, by the way uh, i have this long because of this covid otherwise i would have a little more shorter hair <laughs> because i didn't go to saloon and cut my hair it's 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 growing long and i'm happy you know that it is growing long <laughs> 
<laughs> for sure, for sure. So as, yeah, as you mentioned, you know, I was just going to talk about COVID as as the last question. So what what has been your routine in lockdown? I think it's disrupted everyone's lives in in its own way. But what what is your sort of daily routine in lockdown, and how soon? I I don't know whether you're back on court, but how soon do you think you will be back on court if you're not? Uh, I have no idea when we are gonna be back on court because you know the tournament is being cancelled, and you know they're just talking about this vaccine, and I hope it comes soon. Yeah. But otherwise, my uh, routine is I just get up in the morning. I mean, yeah, late in the morning, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> how late? And, uh, how yeah. late? Come on, tell us. It can be ten or it can be nine sometimes. I'm really tired in the night. Like I watch a movie and then sleep. It it will be late. Otherwise, yeah, like eight thirty or seven thirty because I do my training in the morning. Yeah. On Sundays, yes, I agree that I get up at like ten or ten thirty. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I do my sessions and then have breakfast and I spend time with my nephew. He's two years old, so. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is the first time I've um, got a break where I'm at home for like more than four months almost. Yeah. So um, it's something different for me, and uh, I keep myself busy. Where yes, I uh, spend time with my parents, and at the same time, yes, with my nephew and my sister just stays beside my house. So you know, I I go and meet them. I go and meet him. He's like a stress buster, so I spend time <laughs> with him. And apart from that, yeah, I've been learning a few things. Like I I paint. and uh, i've been learning cooking and baking so these are the few things i've learned uh, in this lockdown and it's really interesting because it was always badminton but uh, apart from badminton i kind of like these you know different uh, stuff which is really very creative and which is very different yeah in like these many years so yeah so guys if you want to be like sindhu right now you should cook and you should paint <laughs> 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 well, um, you know, as as Zita Fogan asked you that question, I'd also be like, I'd also like to announce my next speaker on the series, who is um, another wrestler, Bajrang Punia. So, if you had the chance to ask him any one question, what would you ask him? Um, <clears throat> in this situation, I'm uh, sure that uh, I've met him a couple of times, um, yeah. but. Yeah, since it's a question in this time, in this situation, I would say, how is he coping up with uh, you know this COVID situation, and how is he training? Because I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. you know, he he would also not have the access like in his um, state. Um, yeah. 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 So that is my question uh, to him, and yeah, I wish him all the best for the next whatever is whenever it's gonna start, and yeah. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, uh, Bajrang Punia is gonna be on next Saturday, guys. uh also uh thank you obviously for joining us and all of that if you could just um end this by by saying something to to the viewers or your fans or anything else yeah um yes thank you so much for your support guys and it's been really good um you always been really very supportive and also um yes mudit to you i would say it's it's a wonderful session it's been a wonderful session and thank you so much and it's it's, it's been really good interacting with you I also am. Uh, I'm sure your um, next uh, speaker and whoever it is, I wish you all the very best for your uh, live sessions. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean uh, also uh, for your um, practice sessions and tournaments, whenever um, you know, whichever. I would wish you all the very best, and I hope you do well. Thank you so much. It means a lot coming from you. Uh, and obviously thank you so much for joining in uh it's it's been i i can i can not even count the number of comments that have come in saying this is the best episode so thank you so much for that and thank yeah, you i just thank you i just hope everyone is safe and well at your home i hope everything clears out soon and all of us can be back on court soon and also yeah i just read a comment saying that uh, people ask me about english and hindi songs or whatever i am sorry, sorry about? To say about songs which you which you asked me in the rapid fire so yes yeah. i also listen to telugu and uh, tamil and hindi so i would say all mixed together so i just don't want to upset where i just listen to english <laughs> english music <laughs> but yeah it depends on my mood but uh, i listen to a, a different um, even punjabi of course there are really good songs so it can be any language and i hear to them so yeah <laughs> no for sure M- music is music is universal 
Uh, yeah, because and, yeah, that is how like that keeps you uh, just changing your uh, your mood swings. I'm sure. I think for you also because when you're really upset, you just listen to music. When you're traveling, you listen to music. It's kind of um, you know, um, it's just like I would say. Apart from anything else, what is every time that you do is I would say music. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people do well, that. So. <laughs> well unfortunately instagram has has a one hour limit and we're getting close to that but okay. hopefully we we usually hate um we usually hate living out of a suitcase but hopefully everyone is back to living out of a suitcase soon hopefully the world is a much much safer place soon yes. and yeah take care thank you so much for joining and thank you everyone for tuning in thank you thanks budit stay safe thank you take care bye